in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and probably some other places. <laughs> I am known as the mighty, 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 uh, and your snub nub seven, your brother. Yes, I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to present this message or direct this message towards the new believers in Islam as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, particularly those who are now following the brother we know of as Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. I want to talk to you, some of you, so that we may have a better understanding of one another. This issue doesn't come up a lot, but I wanna address this topic so I don't have to, in comments, say the same thing over and over again. I will just, direct you towards this video, wherever it may be. <laughs> Cause it's not guaranteed to be here today. It could be gone tomorrow. These white racist trolls really hate Angels Up and Up 7. If I was, if I was like Brother Farrakhan, it's too many videos, they can't mess with him. Cause you can believe this. If these racist white folks could somehow erase all of Minister Farrakhan's videos from YouTube, they would, because they don't love him. But I do. I place Brother Farrakhan's videos everywhere, probably more than y'all do, and you claim that you love him so much. I want to talk to you because some of the new believers, some of the very old brothers and sisters, some of them know me. And some of them have developed a certain maturity in dealing with me. But I want to talk to the new believers in Islam under Brother Louis Farrakhan because they say, they say I disrespect Brother Louis Farrakhan. Now, at the same time, you claim I disrespect Brother Farrakhan. You don't bring any proof. You don't bring any evidence in this disrespect, except you don't like my opinion of how I view certain things that he says or certain things that he does. That's my right. Just like it's your right to come to me and tell me what you don't like. But what you're presenting is false. Let us begin with this disrespect. First of all, you disrespect me because you don't know me. You probably don't like my opinion, but you don't know me. You was not there when I stood in front of Louis Farrakhan willing to take a bullet for him. Were you there? Were you there when I stood 
on the corner selling bean pies and final calls? No, you were not there. Were you there when I stood on the corner in below zero temperature selling eggs for my temple and it was so cold the eggs was cracking and popping? Were you there? Were you there when the when Wallace Farad, not Wallace Farad, but Wallace D. Muhammad's believers was on the corners of New York City wanting to fight us over a street corner selling newspapers? Were you there for my seven years, my blood, my sweat, my tears all over this country helping build the temples that you are in right now? If it was not for brothers and sisters like me, you couldn't say what you said right now. So you disrespectful because I did the work for seven years. Some of y'all ain't been in the temple for seven months. How dare you talk about somebody disrespecting somebody when you go right around and you're doing the same dang thing yourself. You don't know me. You don't know my heart. You don't know what I've been through or anything. You call disagreement disrespect. Well, that means you're doing a whole lot of disrespecting. You disrespect your mother, your father, your teachers, your brothers and sisters, everybody, because I'm sure you don't agree with everybody and everybody don't agree with you. When we disagree with somebody, is it coming from a place to try to hurt somebody or is it coming from the heart? If it was not for Minister Louis Farrakhan, I could not be who I am today because he helped wake me up and he gave me experience. Because of Louis Farrakhan, I met people I only read about in a history book. I would never say anything disrespectful about the minister. Never. You don't know who you talking about at all because you disrespectful. And I'm not your slave. Well, brother, uh, we can talk about this behind closed doors. Give me the invitation. Let us get behind closed doors. When you set up the meeting, I'll be there. Tried it. Been there, done that. I have a right to speak my opinion. Then you say, oh, you're, where my, where my pen at? Right, there, there it is. You're a Malcolm X wannabe. Yes, I'll be happy to say that. And a Louis Farrakhan wannabe, and a Elijah Muhammad wannabe, and a Martin Luther King wannabe. I want to be all of them. Yes, I want that fire. I want that heart. Yes, I want to be not like them. I want to be me. But yeah, I want to be seen like them. Not for my own self grandizement because I want to be able to talk to my people and deal with my people's enemies in the best of manners. What, what is, what, what matter could be better than coming like Malcolm or like Brother Farrakhan or like Martin Luther King, Elijah Muhammad, Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, and all our greats, known and unknown. Don't forget the people who helped. I helped Louis Farrakhan and you dare disrespect me. And I still help Brother Farrakhan if I feel that's the right direction. 
Just because you feel that's right don't mean I look at it right. And just because you give an answer don't mean I have to accept it. Just like you don't have to accept what I'm saying right now. But whether you like it or not, That man, Louis Farrakhan, myself and my family, we love that brother. There are those who come to me all the time and they want me to speak against the nation of Islam and brother Farrakhan. I won't do it all the time. That's not what I'm about. I'm about the unification of our people, not about trying to find the flaws and trying to tear somebody down. But there's something called constructive criticism. But if you feel as though you 100% right, nobody can't tell you nothing. We all should be able to be told something. But nobody want to listen to the little guy. Because I ain't smart enough. And then when I look at you, what have you, what do you have? What have you really accomplished? So don't try to judge me. You don't know nothing about me. You haven't been, you have not walked in my shoes. My sacrifice, my blood, my sweat, my tears. Make it so you're able to believe this teaching. I'm your brother. Master Farad Muhammad came to America for black people. I'm a black people. To wake the masses up. He woke me up. And I see, and I see really good beyond what he gave me. That's what you don't believe. But you'll find out as time goes on. I'm not into religion. I don't care nothing about Islam no more. Or Christianity or no religion. But I respect those that believe that's where I come from. I come from Christianity. I come from Islam. It's part of me. I'll never be able to get to just get rid of it. So when you hear me talk, you hear Islam, you hear Christianity. You hear all these things, but I no longer believe in that the way it's presented no more. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad even said that he was supposed to bring another book because the wisdom of the Quran has run its course. The wisdom of the Bible has run its course. He was not able to do it. But if God is a merciful God, you're going to get it. Who's going to bring it? You think it's Louis Farrakhan? Maybe, maybe not. But it could be your little brother right here who you turn your nose up at because I ain't smart like that. But one thing for sure, I respect you, I respect the Quran, I respect that Bible, I respect all of y'all out there, and I would never disrespect none of you, never, but I would defend this reality's temple ministry, and I have a right to my opinion, and I will speak that just like you speak yours, but that should not make us hate feel toward one another. Learn how to love one another despite differences. Our topic 
Louis Farrakhan and the Church of Scientology. What brings me to this video earlier this month, Louis Farrakhan, a man I used to work with in person. When I talk about Brother Farrakhan, I had the honor of working with him in person, in his office, at his house, right here. We, we right here. I traveled all over the country with Brother Farrakhan when I, when I was in my early, uh, late teens, early 20s. So I'm not saying nothing to disrespect, make mockery or degrade because if it was not, I'm telling you, if it was not for Louis Farrakhan, there's a chance I would not be here with us right now because he was my example of manhood and I love my big brother Louis Farrakhan I don't agree with everything he say or everything that he do and some of y'all got this conspiracy thing somebody sent me an email on another video where I was talking about brother Farrakhan and they told me it's cool, you know, that you like Farrakhan back back in back in the day. When you didn't know no better, you was a kid. But uh Farrakhan part of the Illuminati. He part of the global elite. He's a free man, all type whatever. Now here's a here's an email coming from a faceless person. Telling me don't trust Louis Farrakhan. But here you are. You faceless. I don't know what you look like. Spreading gossip and rumors. I don't know what you about. Do you really believe? I'm stupid enough. To listen to anything that you say. Especially. When I work with this man. I heard him talk. In private setting. I heard him speak. And he was not in front of thousands of people in his office. General conversation. I know him better than you do. Not saying that I know him a whole lot. I just worked, a, you know, I just seen a little bit. But I talked to the man. I walked with the man. I stood in front of the man willing to take a bullet. For the man, you don't know nothing about Louis Farrakhan. Don't bring me no, write me no letter talk about Louis Farrakhan, Freemason, he's the Illuminati, or whatever. Louis Farrakhan is what he is, as far as I'm concerned. He's a Muslim follower of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's what he was way back then. That's what he's claiming now. You can make up anything else that you want and call and say whatever you want to. You don't bring no evidence, no proof. No, they got all these hand signals. He's a mason. Look at all the hand signals. All the hand signals all the, don't mean nothing. Ah, he is a Muslim follower of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's all we need to know. Anything else is conspiracy, whatever. Don't mean nothing to me. Because I met him. I worked around him. Now, you can get that off with people that don't know Louis Farrakhan at all. But you ain't gonna bring that to me. I have my differences of opinion. And that's all that it is. Because if it ever came down to a fight, I'm standing with Farrakhan and the nation. That's where I come from. And I will stand with the black church under fire. Because that's where I come from too. So preacher and pastor in Christianity never think that this ministry is against the Christian, the black Christian church or the nation of Islam. How can I be against that which born me? I exist because of the church. I exist because of the mosque. 
the nation of Islam. I'm not going to turn on that which created me. I might not be what they wanted me to be as I grew up, but that's where I come from. That's my family. That's Benedict Arnold, Judas, Turncoat. That's what y'all do. Y'all sell out your family. But I'm not into that. But I want to talk to my family. I wish and hope that Brother Farrakhan could hear my words on this video. We're just talking. The way you talk, Brother Farrakhan. That's where I got it from. But I heard Brother Farrakhan talk about on a radio broadcast, he, and he was answering the question of why he decided to implement some form of Scientology into the nation. I listened to him, and basically what he was saying is that he wants to the, the productivity of the nation to increase and he saw a tool in Scientology and he decided to use that tool to help his mission and on the surface I can dig it you can dig it it's a lot of people okay you know some of us are silly. Oh, that came from a white man. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. That's what I, Ron L. Herbert, that's a white man. I, you tell me something that we don't use that ain't coming from white folks. The cloth that you wear on your body, chances are it came from white people. The food you're eating, because we're not producing food for ourselves, or educating ourselves, everything is coming from our oppressor and his children. So if you decide to reject, that's including your car, because you didn't make the car, the car came from some, some white factory, chances are. Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, and even if it came overseas, you get your Toyota, chances are, it Probably was built in America. It's, it's, if you, come on, let's stop being, some people are just so stupid. See, that's just stupidity. Everything that we have came from people. We don't know. We're actually, a lot of these things we don't know. Who made spoons and forks? I don't know who came up with that. You know, little things. The x-ray machine. Uh, the dentist, the, the tools that they use in dentistry. All kinds of things. First of all, we know for, for a fact, the mat, the average, the mass of the people did not. We didn't create it. You didn't create no car. You didn't create the internet, the computer. We already know. So, there is nothing wrong with taking advantage of something. Because y'all, a lot of y'all out there, you got a gun. And we know Negroes didn't make no gun. <laughs> you ain't making no bullets either. Y'all really need to stop being so silly. You can learn from anybody. Regardless to color, regardless to gender, regardless to class. When you get tripped up on those things, you get messed up. So on the surface, if Brother Farrakhan is having a problem in the nation, and he sees that there's an answer in Scientology, why shouldn't he have the right to be able to use it for his purpose? Not for the purpose of Scientology, but for the purpose 
of what he's trying to do. Like you use your car built by Ford, by white folks. But you using your car your autom and automobile to get around to do what you want to do for your purpose. Same thing here. What y'all tripping on? Now that in itself you should not be tripping on. But we have a problem here. See the problem, Brother Farrakhan, is your teaching and what you represent. That's the problem. Because there I go. I always I got to say, because, remember that other video I told you? Because, because, because I can't, I can't, I'm really, huh, I don't know. Maybe it's because that's just the way I am. <laughs> Let me not get distracted. Let, let's, let's stay on track. Brother Farrakhan, followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, under Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan, listen to me. We're just talking. And see, this ministry, I'm not looking for converts. I'm looking to cause people to think for themselves. Because I'm confident. Once you begin to think for yourself, you and I will be on the same, we'll be thinking the same anyway. Because I'm trying to Get you to accept your reality. Think for yourself. No more belief. Exactly deal with what is exactly on your plate. Not what you think on your plate. What might be on your plate. No. Deal with what you see on your plate. And if it's not on your plate. And you cannot sense it. You cannot acknowledge it. There's no way that you can. You can. Touch it and feel it. Smell it. There's nothing that you can, no way that you can uh, embrace it in your reality. Then it don't exist. If you can't sense it, it don't exist. Even though it might exist. Do you understand what I'm telling us? It might exist. But if you cannot see it, taste it, touch it, there's no way you can sense it. Your brain cannot comprehend it. If your brain cannot comprehend it, it don't exist. And that's just the bottom line. And you can talk and try to sign things up and flip things around and whatever. When you all said and done, if your brain cannot comprehend it, it don't exist. Real quick example. I'm telling time by my watch. But you don't see a watch. You don't see no watch here. So as far as you can concerned, you listening, you listening to me saying that I have a watch. But as far as your brain is concerned, it hears it, but it will not accept the reality of it until you see it. Now, your brain clicks in and now it says, okay, that's real. Now you have truth. You got it? Now you have truth. Real truth. Real truth. I think. I believe. I have a watch. But you don't see nothing. Now you see it. Now it's verified. And that's what makes things real truth. Because now it's verified. By the brain. I'm still getting a little sidetracked. But it's good for us. It's good for us. The problem that I see with Brother Farrakhan and many other people have gave their opinion and disappointment, dislike. Some folks discuss with Brother Farrakhan and his uh, decision to use a method from out of the Church of Scientology to help his movement. On the surface, 
Again, I understand nothing wrong with using any resource, any tool to do, to take and use that tool for what your purpose. Like you would do any hammer, nails, saw, chisel. You take those tools and use it to do what you and, and build what you want to build. But the problem, Brother Farrakhan, the problem, brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam, the problem here is your teaching. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching. Well, brother, you don't know Elijah Muhammad's teaching like Brother Farrakhan. And I don't. I'm just raising some questions here. And my question is this. Brother Louis Farrakhan has said many, many times. Grab almost any DVD, CD or cassette tape. You will hear him say, I am backed up by Allah. And I am backed up. By Elijah Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. I'm not just backed up by the people who follow this word, but I'm backed up by God himself, and I'm backed up by the messenger. So if you, and y'all see what I'm getting ready to say, if you are backed up by God, Elijah Muhammad said he was taught by God, given the supreme wisdom. And if that is true, and that's what you're saying, you're teaching that it is true, then you tell me, why do you need to use what a white man came up with to help you to improve or build your nation. What you need that for? There is no wisdom. Allah the messenger did not leave you enough wisdom. And then they don't have to leave you anything. Because Master Farah Muhammad has not been here since 1930. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. According to your view left us in 1975. But you still say that they back you up. So if they continue to back you up and ain't nobody seen them, then surely they have enough uh, wisdom, power to give to you, to give you what you need. They are not sufficient. Why you got to go to a, a white man, Ronnie or Herbert, and look at what this, this is what y'all teach. The devil is doing and take from out, what, out of what the devil is doing and embrace that. I wouldn't want nothing from no beast. I wouldn't want nothing from no devil. If God and the messenger backing me up, then I pray to them to give me what I need. Or are you saying that the God and the messenger guided you and have told you to go to the church of Scientology? Don't make any sense. Then you say, and you have taught this over and over again, you say that the answer to the black man's prayer always comes from out of the womb of the black woman. How many black women are in this nation? Those of us who are, are the descendants of slaves in America. You mean to tell me, out of all the 40 million plus black people in this nation, all the children that come from out of the womb of the black woman, the answer to your situation and your problem did not come from out of not one of them. That's, that's my problem. Not all that other, not, I'm not tripping off the fact that you're, that you're getting something to help you from a white man. I could, who cares less as long as to get the job done. But your teachings, you're saying that you're backed up by God. What kind of God is this to direct you 
to the Caucasian man of whom you, you call a devil. And this man is a devil according to your teaching because he surely is not a Muslim. He has not been under Islam for 25 years. So why and, and, and what caused you to look in that direction to begin with? Maybe what these people are talking about, you are part of the Illuminati and all, maybe there's some truth to that. But I know for a fact, back in the day when we was working together, when I was a young, younger man, <laughs> that was, you was not part of nothing like that. I know you wasn't. Because I would have saw it. I would remember. I said, wow. So that's why he said that. That's why he was doing that. He was part of the Illuminati. <laughs> you were a Muslim follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I want to say this to Brother Farrakhan. I want to say this to those under his leadership. The problem is you. The solution is not L. Ron Hubbard. Elijah Muhammad didn't need the Church of Scientology. Malcolm X didn't need the Church of Scientology. They were successful. Why were they successful? They were successful because they were more than just talk. They took their talk and put it into action. And that is something and one of the reasons why I left the nation, and that's one of the reasons of why Brother Farrakhan even came to St. Louis in, in uh, last year in May and said the same thing. We don't have nothing. We've been working all this time and don't have nothing. And that's because Louis Farrakhan, with all due respect, and I love you, no doubt. The problem is you. You have allowed those up under your wing to become hero worshippers. They are blind followers. And since they are blind followers and hero worshippers, they cannot make no kind of move without you. And you as a man and apparently, you don't have the backing of Master Farah Muhammad. You don't have the backing of Elijah Muhammad. You have had Louis Farrakhan. You have had millions of dollars. You have access to all types of celebrities. You have all types, you have opportunities. Available to you. You have had money available to you. That Malcolm wished he could have had. That Elijah Muhammad wished. Master Farah Muhammad wished they could have had. You have had. But them with little or nothing. Created this movement. Which. Which attracted you. But you have. All these resources. All these brothers and sisters, you have lawyers, you have doctors, you have all, you got, you get millions of dollars, but you have produced nothing except beautiful quotes that we see on YouTube videos and on the news. The best thing that you've done was the Million Man March. And then you lost it. You could have been the one leader that we need. But somewhere. And I would say. Maybe this happened. On purpose. Because that slot. Was not for you. The reason why your people. Are not productive. Is because of you. You want to blame them brother Farka. It's you. Because you are not productive. You are the leader. They're looking to you for guidance. 
and direction. But since you don't want to blame you, you want to blame them under your wing. So let me help them. Because ain't nothing wrong with Louis Fox, huh? I've been doing this a long time. Look, look what all I got. So I know it ain't me. It's got to be them. So I've run out of teachings of Elijah Muhammad. That ain't getting it. So I need to go and check out this white fella. Maybe the white man can help me. Maybe the devil can help me. That's what it sounds like to me. You could easily, you are the top salesperson of your organization, just like me. If I had a lot of followers under my wing, I'm the top salesperson. So everyone else, I am their example. They learn from the top salesperson. But if the top salesperson is not producing and the others below him are following his example, what do you expect from those below? The same thing. You may think that you have produced, and you have. You have produced a lot. But compared to the millions, see, I know we raised, when I was in the Nation of Islam, we raised $2.5 million in about two months. In 60 days, we raised $2.5 million. I don't, what did you, what, what did you do with the money? See, something wrong in the decision making, something went wrong. I am not going to accuse nobody of stealing. We can just have an idea and just mess the funds up. But since that time, you've gained and you still are able to gain millions and millions of dollars. But compared, but what you have compared to all the millions of dollars that you've earned, you have nothing to show. Nothing. And so see, that's why the people can't produce because they can't really see what they're producing because they're not producing anything. Once you put success and wins under your belt, you don't need Ron L. Hubbard to inspire and encourage anybody because now they can say, look, we done this, we done that. Not only in Chicago, everything in Chicago. No, we got this in New York City. We got this in Louisiana. We got this in California. We're doing this all over. So everybody can feel like they are a part of it. And everybody can see what they're doing in their own hometowns. But after all this time, since 19... 78, 77, whenever you first began building the nation, earning millions of dollars, the nation of Islam should be doing much, much better. But instead of looking at yourself, because now, when I was a young Muslim, you were just Brother Farrakhan. Now you are the Honorable Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan the divine one, the third behind Elijah. But when I was in the nation of Islam, you was just little brother Louis Farrakhan, the national spokesman for Elijah Muhammad. No more, no less. Now, we got the fancy garb and the kufis, what they call them, hats, the kufis and these beautiful clothes and In conclusion, I said this, and I hope that I hope that the followers of Louis Farrakhan, I hope that you continue to love and admire Brother Farrakhan, and but you need to stop being a hero worshiper. Stop being a blind follower. 
and help him. And the way that you help him is to begin, you can continue to be believe in Elijah Muhammad and what Brother Farrakhan is saying, but you got this big you got to begin to go outside of the box and do your own thing. Brother Farrakhan is not a stockbroker. He's not a mathematician. He's not some type of fancy business person. He's just the national spokesman for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He can inspire you to do great things. But y'all depending on him to do Everything. And that's the mode that you have to get up out of. Because it don't make no sense for y'all to have all the money that you're getting and you don't have nothing to show for it. What are you? Are you drunk? Are y'all drinking, uh, what's that, uh, Dom Perignon? <laughs> you know, are you getting drunk? You smoking weed? Well, why are you, why, how are you blowing your money? You don't need Ra El Hubbard. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you have to always remember if you got God backing you up, and then you got the messenger backing you up, you don't need nothing from no white guy, Ra El Hubbard, or nobody. You're supposed to be the keepers and the maintainers of the supreme wisdom. Or is it a lie? Or did Elijah Muhammad lie to you? Brother Farrakhan, are you a liar? That's what I'm asking us right now. So it's not about the ability to use a tool for your own purpose. But this is your teaching. You're saying that God backed you up. You're saying, and you teach that the answer to our prayers comes from the womb of the black woman. But you're not going to the womb of a black woman. And apparently and clearly, what Elijah Muhammad taught you is not sufficient enough. You've got to turn to the white man. You don't, and you don't see that there's a problem with that? When you're supposed to be backed up by God himself? Not backed up by Jesus who is the son of God, or y'all call him a prophet, not backed up by Lot or Moses, you backed up by God himself. Allah came to us in the person of Master Fry Muhammad in 1930, the long-awaited Mahdi. But he, and he, with all his power and wisdom, he's going to guide you to that which you call a devil, you don't see no problem with that? Then I'm telling you, you will continue to fail. And not only are you going to continue to fail with this type of thinking, but you're going to fade out. And maybe that's good. And I'm going to bring this to a quick conclusion. I'm going to tell you that the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was the first teaching to the so-called the uh, Negro in America, we who are the descendants of slaves, that teaching brought us closer to God in a real sense because Elijah Muhammad took the mystery out of God and made God man, flesh and blood, made God a reality. And I'm going to be bold enough to tell you and if you listen to me, you can hear it. You don't want to, but you can hear it and you can see it. The next step in the evolution of the nation of Islam is right here. But brother, you you teaching that atheist kind of stuff. If we were taught God as a mystery, and then Elijah Muhammad comes on the scene and teach you that God is a man, flesh, and blood, what you think 
The next step could be. The next step to be. Is to bring you into your full reality. Just accept things the way they are. Because before religion. It was just things that the way they were. You just dealt with things just the way they are. Just like all the other animals. There is no example in nature. Where some animal is trying to show praise to some God. That's something the imagination of the human being came up with. Due to ignorance. Because they did not understand the functioning of the sun. They did not understand the functioning of the sea. Or understand the ways of the animals and nature. So they made up these things to give themselves an answer until things got real. And when things got real and they could verify that realness then that's where science comes in. But they held on to that which they imagined. So I imagine that the most logical step in the evolution of the nation of Islam coming from up out of a Christian background because all of us who are the descendants of slaves our background and our root in religion is Christianity. So we come from up out of Christianity. God being taught as a mystery into Elijah Muhammad. Man is God. And of course we are gods. And this makes us real flesh and blood. The next logical step has to be total. The total coming up out of religious belief systems. Period. Because you don't want no connection to no Arabs. You don't need a holy Quran. It's all natural in you. You don't need no book. You don't need a Bible. You don't need a Quran. You don't need nothing. You need to find your nature. And once you come into your nature, you don't need a book. Because the books. Oh man. Uh, the books. Were designed. And if you understand them, they are to bring you back into your nature. And your nature is not a Muslim to submit to no God. That's not your nature. You ain't supposed to submit to nothing. You're supposed to be who you are and be happy and proud of what you are. You're nobody's slave. You was given the teaching of the honorable Elijah Muhammad to break slavery. And now I'm telling you and I'm suggesting to you that now it is time that you break the ultimate slave mentality and to cut up out of this belief systems of God and wanting to be a servant to anything it's time for you to be 100% free we have been slaves for over 300 years and you jump from the white man being a physical slave and now we have become slaves to God in books written by Arabs and written by white folks. So you still a slave. Where is your book? Your book is right here. Remember that old story of the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy tried to go home. And so she went to the wizard. Y'all go to white folks. He gonna help me get home. You go to the Arabs. They gonna help me get home. But see, Dorothy didn't know 
that it was all she had the power to take herself home all the time. The only thing she had to do was click her heel. But she went through all that. It was a wonderful experience because in her trying to find herself, she helped the tin man, she helped the lion, she helped the scarecrow. Brothers and sisters, we in our sojourn trying to find ourselves because we have been lost. We have helped white women. We've been helping the immigrants. We've been helping everybody, the Arabs. Now it's time to help yourself and click your heels together. You don't have to wait for them to get you home. You can go home all by yourself. You don't need a Bible. You don't need a Quran. Click your heels together. It's all here. It's in you. Those books were for other people. The Quran was for those Arabs and the Bible for those Christians, whatever. That's not you. Yours is waiting to come when you get into your right state of mind. And as soon as you get into your right state of mind, you will click your heels and it will come forth. The Bible and the Quran made just for you. And just like those books were designed to guide people, you, out of your mind, will you will bring forth book for you. But at the same time, it will be for them also because their books have been tainted, distorted, and have failed. Now, you are to bring in the ultimate book. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that he was supposed to bring in another book. Some of y'all don't know that. Ask Brother Farrakhan. I was told that Elijah Muhammad was supposed to be the one to bring in the new book. For us, a new book. No Quran, no Bible. We are the catalyst to bring in the new, into the this new heaven and new earth. We are. Because of our suffering for over 400 years in a strange place, in a strange land, among strangers. It's you. And you and I, we are to bring all of humanity from our fiction land, out of the Barnum and Bailey world that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talks about, bring us up out of fantasy and fiction and mysteries, bring us into our reality 100%. And the answer is not going to come from Ron L. Hubbard. The answer is going to come from out of the womb of the black woman. And I'm telling you, and I'm not being spooky, this is the beginning. Because I came from the same place that y'all come from. And if you listen and don't be prejudiced and biased against me, you can hear it. Elijah Muhammad is talking to you. Master Farah Muhammad is talking to you. But if you're ego and you're arrogant, then you're really missing out on something because you think that the word and the God is supposed to come the way, a certain way you believe. But everything that come to us don't always come to us the way we feel or the way we believe it should. This is a train that you should not miss because this train is for you. Click your heels, black man and woman of America. The nation of Islam, you have been so important in this fight in America. Brother Farrakhan, you did not spend all these years to raise up the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad just to lose it. This is your time. Remember. Remember, Brother Farrakhan, the time is supposed to be coming where your enemies will bow down at your feet, but not with their wisdom, not from the wisdom of some Ron L. Hubbard or anybody is coming from out of us and has always been here. Our shoes 
to click. Not their shoes. Our shoes. I love us. And I'm still a child of Elijah Muhammad. And I'm telling you this. And I'm not ashamed of it. If it was not for Elijah Muhammad, I wouldn't, I couldn't say nothing. Well, how? You're not, you don't sound like, you don't sound like you come from, what happened to you, brother? You, <laughs> you lost. No, you are lost. It's called evolution. Elijah Muhammad taught me when I was an FOI. You are not a robot, fruit of Islam. You are a thinking man. So, does that mean when, it, when I begin to self-think that I should question everything but I don't question you, Elijah? I don't think the messenger was teaching us that because he also said, question me. And I am questioning. And I have found the answer through self-thought. Through, because Elijah is not here. Master Farah Muhammad is here. So you owe your own children. Your fathers and your mother, they're no longer with us. So now as mature and grown people, we have to act on ourselves for ourselves. We can't depend on Elijah. He's not here. We can't depend on Master Farah Muhammad. They are not here. But they gave us the tools. And the tools is not in the white man's toolbox. It's right here in your heart. Right here with us. We don't need no wizard in a land of Oz. We don't need a preacher from the church of Scientology to do, 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 do nothing for us. Master Farah Muhammad and Elijah gave us everything that we ever needed. As long as you mature in that teaching. Who said that it was supposed to stay exactly the same that it was in 1930? And I'm telling you, this is the natural evolution and the progression of those teachings. Like Elijah said, believe it, take it or let it alone. It's your call. But no matter what your conclusion, however you see things, look inside yourself. And once you stop looking at Minister Farrakhan as some hero and stop being a blind follower, you'll move this thing right on where it needs to go. That's all I wanted to say on that. And with that said, thank you for listening. I made another hour. Man, this, this is a beautiful thing. We we need to sit and talk with one another. We need to discuss this. Because I want us to go. I want the nation. I want all of us in this struggle to do good. Because if y'all do good, that's less work for me. I can shut up. <laughs> for real. I, I'd be happy to shut up. And I'd be happy to help y'all do this. But until then, I'm going to voice my opinion. Because I think. No, I don't think, I know that it's good for us. Because Minister Farrakhan is not going to be here forever. Just like Elijah and Master Farah Muhammad was not here forever. I'm not going to be here forever. So we need to get our people, put them into a condition where they think for themselves and they can guide themselves. So even if one of our leaders is assassinated, incarcerated, or die from natural causes, the people know the path, stay on the path, and they evolve instead of digress or go backwards. I love us. I love the nation of Islam. So please don't leave dumb comments. Just talk to me. And I'll talk to you. There's no hate here at all. Maybe a little debate, but that's all. I want you to do good. Because when everybody in this struggle do good, we all do good. You have 
We have 40 million black people in this nation that we got to try to sell this movement to. And we are a long way from that goal. Not even close. So we need everybody doing whatever they do, but try to get everybody on the same team, at least pointed in the same direction. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tali. Keep it raw. I love you, my friends and subs and the Nation of Islam, Brother Louis Farrakhan, your wife, Sister Khadija, and family. Hebrew Israelite Nation, Black Power Cartel, More Science Temple. Love, love all of us. Love all of us. And I wish the best. We deserve it. After all this suffering, we deserve some happiness in our life. Don't y'all think? Let us get some happiness. I'm tired of funerals and crying and depression. The black man and woman in America, it's time for us to have a little happiness in our lives. And I'm, I am 45,000. say, oh, you're, where, where my pen at? Right, that, there it is. You're a Malcolm X wannabe. Yes, I'll be happy to say that. And a Louis Farrakhan wannabe, and a Elijah Muhammad wannabe, and a Martin Luther King wannabe. I want to be all of them. Yes, I want that fire. I want that heart. Yes, I want to be not like them. I want to be me. But yeah, I want to be seen like them. Not for my own self grandizement Because I want to be able to talk to my people. And deal with my people's enemies. In the best of manners. What, what is, what, what matter could be better than coming like Malcolm, or like Brother Farrakhan, or like Martin Luther King, Elijah Muhammad, Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, and all our greats, known and unknown. Don't forget the people who helped. I helped Louis Farrakhan, and you dare disrespect me. And I still help Brother Farrakhan. If I feel that's the right direction. Just because you feel that's right. Don't mean I look at it right. And just because you give an answer. Don't mean I have to accept it. Just like you don't have to accept what I'm saying right now. But whether you like it or not. That man Louis Farrakhan. Myself and my family, we love that brother. There are those who come to me all the time. And they want me to speak against the Nation of Islam and Brother Farrakhan. I won't do it. All the time. That's not what I'm about. I'm about the unification of our people. This message, or direct this message, towards the new believers 
in Islam as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, particularly those who are now following the brother we know of as Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. I want to talk to you, some of you, so that we may have a better understanding of one another. This issue doesn't come up a lot, but I want to address this topic so I don't have to, in comments, say the same thing over and over again. I will just direct you towards this video, wherever it may be. Because <laughs> it's not guaranteed to be here today. It could be gone tomorrow. These white racist trolls really hate Angels Up and Up 7. If I was, if I was like Brother Farrakhan, it's too many videos, they can't mess with him. Because you can believe this. If these racist white folks could somehow erase all of Minister Farrakhan's videos from YouTube, they would. Because they don't love him. But I do. I place Brother Farrakhan's videos everywhere. Probably more than y'all do. And you claim that you love him so much. I want to talk to you because some of the new believers, some of the very old brothers and sisters, some of them know me. And some of them have developed a certain respect for me because I did the work for seven years. Some of y'all ain't been in the temple for seven months. How dare you talk about somebody disrespecting somebody when you go right around and you're doing the same dang thing yourself. You don't know me. You don't know my heart. You don't know what I've been through or anything. You call disagreement disrespect. Well, that means you doing a whole lot of disrespecting. You disrespect your mother, your father, your teachers, your brothers and sisters, everybody, because I'm sure you don't agree with everybody and everybody don't agree with you. When we disagree with somebody, is it coming from a place to try to hurt somebody or is it coming from the heart? If it was not for Minister Louis Farrakhan, I could not be who I am today. Because he helped wake me up and he gave me experience. Because of Louis Farrakhan, I met people I only read about in a history book. I would never say anything disrespectful about the minister. Never. You don't know who you talking about at all because you disrespectful. And I'm not your slave. Well, brother, uh, we can talk about this behind closed doors. Give me the invitation. Let us get behind closed doors. When you set up the meeting, I'll be there. Tried it. Been there, done that. I have a right to speak my opinion. Then maturity in dealing with me. But I want to talk to the new believers in Islam under Brother Louis Farrakhan because they say 
They say I disrespect Brother Louis Farrakhan. Now, at the same time, you claim I disrespect Brother Farrakhan, you don't bring any proof. You don't bring any evidence in this disrespect except you don't like my opinion of how I view certain things that he says or certain things that he does. That's my right. Just like it's your right to come to me and tell me what you don't like. But what you're presenting is false. Let us begin with this disrespect. First of all, you disrespect me because you don't know me. You probably don't like my opinion, but you don't know me. You was not there when I stood in front of Louis Farrakhan willing to take a bullet for him. Were you there? Were you there when I stood on the corner selling bean pies and final calls? No, you were not there. Were you there when I stood on the corner in below zero temperature selling eggs for my temple and it was so cold the eggs was cracking and popping? Were you there? Were you there when the when Wallace Farad, not Wallace Farad, but Wallace D. Muhammad's believers was on the corners of New York City wanting to fight us over a street corner selling newspapers? Were you there for my seven years? My blood, my sweat, my tears all over this country helping build the temples that you are in right now. If it was not for brothers and sisters like me, you couldn't say what you said right now. So you disrespect. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and probably some other places. <laughs> I am known as the mighty, 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 uh, and your snub nub seven, your brother. Yes, I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to present 